Hey everyone, welcome to November 9th edition of the uh, Chaos Community Call. I'm Elizabeth, I am the Community Manager here at Chaos, and I see some new faces. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Really excited to have you here. Um, if we have time, we might ask you to just do a quick introduction of yourself, but uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, and also just a reminder, you are absolutely welcome to keep your camera off, we do not care. Uh, I keep mine on just because whatever I do. Um, so yeah, uh, the minutes and the agenda have been dropped in the chat. If you would like to add your name as an attendee, that would be awesome. Um, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So I see Emily had a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Emily. Hooray! Thank you. I hope you had a great day. Did you do happy anything birthday. fun? Um, you know, well, my husband took me to dinner and um, he took me to dinner the very, the place that we like first, um, where he first took me to dinner on my birthday and he like, you know, flew my mom down here and stuff. So it was nice. Oh, that sounds awesome. I'm glad you had a good day. Thank you. That's cool. All right. Um, we do have quite a lot on the agenda today. So let's jump in and I will share my screen. All right. Um, so before we go forward, we wanted to bring this back around the um, DCO sign off stuff. Um, for those who aren't familiar with this discussion, um, right now, chaos, because we're part of the Linux Foundation, um, requires a DCO, um, and I don't remember what that stands for developer certificate of origin. Certificate of origin, right. Okay. I'm doing good. I even had coffee today. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, we require that whenever you submit a PR. Um, and it can be kind of a pain. And it's not an easy thing to add sometimes. So um, there's been a discussion here about if we have a, uh, something that we can do to make that easier or just take it away. There's also some issues about using real names. And um, that can be a problem for, for some people. Um, so this was kind of what we were talking about doing. Um, and then Ray was the last one to comment a couple of weeks ago, and he added a couple of other options um, to, to not require it 100%, um, but having it say, by making a contribution, you agree to the DCO terms. Basically, it's um, I think the pur purpose of that is to be able to tie a PR back to a person so that if there's, you know, in my understanding, if there's something nefarious or something bad in there, then they know who, who is responsible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still required. It's just streamlining it. Basically, you don't have to submit any form or check any boxes. It's just saying just by contributing, you, you accept the terms. It's, it's like a lot of the terms that you see on, online. And so it just lowers a lowers a barrier to entry. And you know, I mean, like you said, Elizabeth, not having a DCO is not really an option. Ray, where is mm -hmm. where? So like, if I was doing a PR, mm -hmm. is this like in a? Can you do a PR template, or is this just like on the yeah. readme somewhere? You just put it on the readme file. Is what these two communities have done. Um, so. And sorry, I'm just coming up here. I'm assuming yeah. this is instead of a CLA. Yeah. Right. It was actually instead of nothing is how okay. the conversation started. Right. And then um, nothing isn't really an option. Sure. Yeah, nothing wasn't really an option. And then, yeah, then the CLA came up, but that was considered. Yeah, CLA is even worse because you really need to sign something. And, and typically yeah. somebody in the community needs to keep track of all of that. And that's not a fun activity to do um, no you so. don't want to be that person yeah. Yeah. i don't think anyone's doing it right now i know i'm not doing yeah. anything so if i'm supposed to be someone tell me have we asked the linux foundation what our options are around the dco and how flexible they are around how we do it i haven't had the explicit conversation about flexibility the only conversation i had was you, you kind of got to you have to keep something right yeah was the was that so I I mean I can I can reach back out to uh, Brian and see what he thinks about this you know just putting it in the readme and see if that's okay yeah and that feel free to copy me on on the email okay uh, so I mean I've had obviously mm -hmm. 
num numerous conversation with other lawyers, not LF lawyers, but this was deemed pretty acceptable for okay, okay. for lawyers at both GitLab and and our counsel like you. Okay. Well, I guess just put me on as the action item and I'll take it. Yeah. I think that um, in the spirit of duocracy, that um, fixing it um, for um, that talking to Linux Foundation about changing uh, the chaos practice might lead to fixing it overall for other Linux Foundation projects uh, and embodies that kind of bottom up um, governance that is, um, you know, open sourcey. Or, uh, or reveal right it as, hopefully not reveal it as a non-negotiable. Yeah, or giving people right the up. opportunity to opt out and, and have an alternative, yeah. Like just, I think they'll always have us have a DCO. It's just if they can get, if they'll allow this new mechanism that Ray's used before, which seems reasonable to me, um, that would make it a lot easier. For especially for new contributors, I think the DCO is a little intimidating. Yeah, very much so. I think that the, the DCO um, privileges developers, coders, people who are using Git at the command line, and yes. with people who are using it in GitHub, you know, using the UI at a disadvantage. And Chaos's mission has to do with the health of, of open source communities as a whole, which includes issues and, you know, project management as a whole. And so it's, it's a good place for chaos to contribute. Plus 100, yeah, I, I think we do have to be easy to contribute to it. Removing this obstacle as it exists would be wonderful. Any other thoughts on this before we move ahead? Rock on. Thanks, Matt, for reaching out to the LF about that. We appreciate that. Okay, let's move on to new items. Um, let's do some working group updates for the group. So the first one is risk. Sean, do you got anything for us? Sure. Uh, the risk working group met last week, I believe, or the week before, recently. And we, we had a discussion about um, really trying to understand, get our head around um, what we think of uh, metric models. And I don't think we have an answer yet, but we have um, started thinking about it um, and entertaining the possibility of creating uh, metric models. I think I can say the group isn't, um, we haven't fully gotten our collective head around it yet, but I, that's kind of normal, I think, for a working group that hasn't been actively working in the metric model working group or the Asia Pacific working group. Uh, you, we, our group had never, other than me, heard of them before, um, and so that's that was the substance of the last meeting that we had. Sophia, I don't know if you have anything to add that you recall. I'm just going to say that thinking about dependency risk in the context of metrics model, we also spent some time thinking about what metrics you would want to include in that metrics model and identifying things that weren't yet defined as metrics. So essentially defining submetrics as part of the metrics model process. Uh, right. And one of them might be something like how we want to flag bug resolution versus issue resolution, which has yes. to distinguish and looking for ways that we could actually enumerate that, um, which I think is probably teed up for our next discussion. But I, mostly absolutely. using a metrics model is a way to determine what were the key metrics that we would want to be part of that model and which ones were not yet defined and then working from there. That's, that's very important detail. This is why you should give this report. <laughs> All right, thank you, risk group. Um, any questions for the risk group? Maybe um, if we could just do, since we have some new people on the call, maybe uh, just do a quick 10 second summary of what the risk group is all about? Well, um, our metrics, so obviously all of chaos is about health and sustainability of open source software. And the risk working group, I think, takes a, a either an OSPO or a tech firm's, um, I would say kind of corporatized view of things that could pose significant uh, business risk um, to the 
to, to the long term sustainability of whatever it is your your organization does. So um, some of those risks are licensing. So we have a number of metrics already defined around pro project licensing and file licensing. And um, I think we have something that's not called software bill of materials, but it's very close to that concept. And that we have another set of metrics um, that are focused on software dependencies, which have become a, really for the last year, they've been a very significant topic of discussion on the source of where our new metrics are coming right now. Um, so for each project that you have, there are imports that it makes. And each time a developer adds a new import that adds a dependency to your whole stack and operation. And so some of the metrics that we've been defining are focused on first creating an inventory of those dependencies across a particular ecosystem, say a thousand repositories at your company or organization. And then also calculating something called Libier, which we've defined. And I won't try to explain it briefly because I can't in 10 seconds. But it's kind of what you think it would be. It's how old is the library compared to the latest release, the version that you're using. It's a measure of that. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Uh, since we have you, let's move on to evolution. So I was there was an evolution meeting last Tuesday, and I was at um, a member summit, so I was not in the meeting, and I don't know if there was one. I feel like I showed up and waited around for a little while, but I don't yeah. think anyone came. I mean, generally, it's like Kevin and I and Vinod that have been in that in that meeting and we're just sort of cranking out some basic metrics the evolution working group is about the we originally call it the growth maturity and decline working group it's really about um, providing metrics that allow you to see how your project is evolving over time with regards to code contributors um, comp issues that are opening so that you're very kind of what i would call your your core activity metrics um, within chaos are generally under evolution, or if they're not there, they're under common. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Sure. Uh, moving along to the DEI working group. Anybody want to take a stab at that one? Um, I can go, but also you had, I think you have an item in here, Elizabeth, with um, that the forum. The participate form yeah that's on down here but i can move oh, it up okay yeah i just i know we had talked about it in dei that's all yeah you want to talk about that first i was i'm getting a link sure yeah so um in the dei working group um, which stands for diversity equity and inclusion we are talking about ways to um, help the onboarding process for people who are interested in joining the chaos community um, one thing um, that we decided to do is provide a more formal way for someone to indicate their interest. Um, so we came up with this form that people could fill out, um, which is right. Nope. Nope. That's the code of conduct thing. <laughs> I'll find the form for you. Okay, no worries. Um, I should have put it in here. I didn't. So um, it's just a quick form that um, asks for some basic information, some um, areas that people might be interested in contributing in. And we put it on Twitter and we added it to the newsletter and also I believe the mailing list, maybe. I don't remember now, but um, we had 14 responses. We just did this last week. Um, I think a uh, couple of people have shown their faces and their names in Slack and one of them is here today as well. Um, and I, you know, I will reach out to someone who then fills out the form. I'll reach out with a personal email based on kind of what they are looking to do and what they how they would like to help. Um, so that's pretty good, I think. It was kind of yeah. cool to see that. Um, so hopefully some of those people will stick around and continue to um, to participate and get to know chaos and get to know our community and um, then can figure out a, a specific way that they would like to help out, so. That's great. It's really great to hear 14 people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought that was quite a lot. It was more than I had anticipated. So yeah, it was good. That's awesome. Um, if, does anybody have any questions on that? Mm -mm. I'd be interested to see like what the follow up is and how we can continue to help people. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I have a, an orthogonal question. Um, so 
if, if someone's new and they join, in addition to the form, is there information where they could see the areas they could get involved and how to get involved, perhaps if they want to know that before deciding whether to commit or not? So that's something that we uh, are working on. I think uh, Matt Cantu, who's on this call, is working on a kind of a nice landing page for people mm -hmm. to um, have like a better, uh, what's the word I want? flow chart or, or a tree or something to help them decide where to go. Um, right now we have this uh, participate page, which is, uh, let's see if I can, um, which is, is a lot. <laughs> we just kind of throw everything and it's kind of slow, maybe. Yeah. Um, there it goes. Um, so we have some ways that people can get involved just basically, if you mm -hmm. just want to, you know, kind of get a start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the calendar of events. Um, and then we have a little bit more about some of our working groups at the bottom here. Um, but as far yeah. as, you know, like specific things, we don't really have that outlined anywhere right now. Yeah, I, I saw this page and, and I thought this was great, but um, I was thinking some additional value might be, hey, here's a good first ticket if you want to try something or, hey, have you thought about doing X? Um, and uh, I'd, I'd be happy to help with that. Yeah, Maybe let's get in contact. Um, I, I just posted in the chat here, the kind of the prototype version of the page that we're building. It's very early, of course, but it says, Basically, you say, I want to do this, I want to do this, and it, you click on it and it brings you to the best resources we have for that. Um, oh, cool. And, I'll and, take and a look. I'd like, I'd like, yeah, I'd like some, another set of eyes on it if you're willing to help with that. That'd be great. Absolutely. And you get to talk to me. Yay. <laughs> I am very kind. I, I try. I try to be very kind. My kids probably would argue with that. Anyway, <laughs> story altogether. Um, so yeah, this is really great, Matt. I have one comment, which is, and maybe Matt and Libby, you can kind of think about this, which is we have the web page that Elizabeth is showing, and then we have the GitHub org, and they're kind of like you know they're kind of two different things, but they're kind of <laughs> together. <laughs> so I'm not sure how to how to draw those together. What do you mean, like chaos is GitHub? Yeah, I mean, like, so we do a ton of work in here as well, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of info in here. That's um, a great point. And then the, and there are some that have like good first issues, right? Like that. But like those are the good to Libby when Libby is talking about good first issue, like right there. There's add mentees to the website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's it's buried, like it's totally. Uh, there's no way to see it off of the web page um we could create and like if you click on good first issue that link will is a persistent link to all of the good first issues for that repo for that right that is well i wonder if that's something that you can create at the organization level i haven't done that before i don't know if that's i'll look into it i would want that to be a thing if i were dream, dreaming up a, a git hosting website but i don't know if mm -hmm. it's a thing these topics are per repo, right? You assign yeah. them to the repo level. You, you, yeah, right. I know for sure they are. What I don't know is if there's a way to make, I know that some labels are standard across our community as well. So, I'll, I'll, Do we think, um, do, do we need like a more formal team? to work on this onboarding stuff or Matt, are you like, I don't want it to dump all on. Like I would like, I mean, I've been thinking about um, ramping up the discussion around software. And I had a few conversations at member summit with folks who are working on metric software of different kinds. Some of it is auger related. Some of it is independent. Um, I think there are a lot of pieces of software growing up around uh, the metric space that we're in right now. And so, you know, I think a one path to to that kind of contribution might just be helping to support newcomers and and certainly making the issues more easily navigable for a newcomer would be something I can try to look into. I can take that as an action item for next week. 
There's also, I, I, we, we originally brought up the, um, the onboarding team and the idea was Matt, um, Matt Cantu Snell, me, um, was going to bring out um, some of this and see if it's interesting to the community. It looks like we've identified a need at this point. I'd like to see about um, putting together some kind of um, group that might meet or even just an informal asynchronous group on this. Awesome. Yeah. Can we, can anonymous blobfish? <laughs> Sorry. That was great. Whoever that is, do they want to add in that action item for you? Matt, can too. I don't know who that is. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, start. How do you, how do you want to say this? Start something. <laughs> I don't know how you want to say it. We will look back at that and be like, of course. <laughs> um, I'll, bring, I'll bring some materials. I'll bring some materials and some structure to the um, DEI group to this tomorrow. Okay. I just posted a link to a GitHub search that allows us to find all of the good first issues across repos. Oh. Like, Thank uh, you, Don. I just created S. Goggins' untitled project within Chaos, where I found a way to create a filter too. So, so maybe we could even just link thing. link this search. Oh, this is this search is actually perfect. From to some, you know, link to this search from somewhere. Super a lot less work than what I started. Yeah. <laughs> I spent a lot of time writing complex search queries on GitHub for some reason. <laughs> It's a, it's, just, it's why we love it. Off. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why this one has a little purple check and these have not. So I saw that issues are closed issues are now purple instead of red, maybe for uh, like reasons. Oh, of you can, can mean. Oh, good point. You actually need to filter by open. So uh, you just can add, add that. that. Yeah. Somebody got like that horn honking in the background. Can you do it up here? Probably. Isn't it is yeah. pulling open? I think it um, might. Nope. I don't know what it is. We'll look it up. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I was going to be really smart there for a second. That did not happen. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been status. I don't know. That makes sense to me. Gosh. Anyway. Um, OK. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Matt. Thanks everybody else. Um, the DEI working group is meeting. Now I should open this participate page every single time so we can just quickly see. Uh, that meets tomorrow at 10 a.m. US Central. So if you're interested in participating more in the onboarding conversations or anything about diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, this is the meeting that you would like to attend if you are able to. We also, I should say, do record all the meetings and put them up on YouTube eventually. I try to be timely. Sometimes I'm more timely than others, but um, yeah, so you can always go back and watch. If you have an extra 50 minutes, you don't have anything to do. You can just watch what you missed. So, uh, okay. And what else did we, so we didn't really actually talk about the DEI group. We just talked about the form and onboarding. So. I think the only thing I wanted to add was just, we are working on a few metrics. One, that code of conduct metric. That's uh, one of our original metrics in DEI. I just wanted to kind of show people we are working through revisiting this metric. And I, I think we started with code of conduct because we didn't think it would be that much of a change. <laughs> and this is just to show you as we kind of read the existing metric where, where we're at with respect to just revisiting it. So this is just a a call to all working groups again to think think about the metrics that you've released prior and and revisit them um, to see if the narrative is is still good i mean i think i think the useful exercise especially well for everyone newcomers and longtime contributors alike is if we read it now and it doesn't make sense it probably needs to be revisited a little bit and if we read it now it's perfectly clear it may be just fine.
And I would encourage people, this is a great way to get involved. So if you see a metric that you have opinions about ways that maybe we could improve it while we're revisiting a lot of the metrics would be a, would be a great time. So that's a great way to, to get engaged For sure. to, engage to the community. Um, I do know that down here, there's a couple of other ideas about that. Should we talk about that now or come back? I know you got to go, Dawn. We didn't get to your comment. I'm so sorry. Do you want to say it really quick? No, that's fine. Matt or somebody here, Sean can cover it. Okay. Um, so down here, we were talking about the metrics that we review, and we, we realized we didn't really have a consistent criteria of what metrics should be the ones that we're reviewing. Um, like, does it, you know, is it <coughs> release cycles? Is it years? Is it last commit? So this is something we should sort out so that we can be consistent across working groups. And I don't know if we want to sort that out right this second, or if we want to table that till, or hold on oh, that. Oh, I see. You know, I know, you know what we're talking yeah. about? I think I, um, okay, I see the question. Like we're kind of starting with old metrics, but like, mm -hmm. you know, we should have some kind of like defining line. So we make sure like that- we, we don't just start reviewing the ones we just released in yeah. <laughs> October. Yeah. I or might. we missed some because they, yeah, you know, we just it. figured, oh, they were new enough or whatever. So um, maybe we'll wait on that since it's already half past. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. I have a question before that, I guess. Um, if, is there a way to pull sort of the overall ages of all the metrics? Because then we can figure out what lines make sense for us and for each working group. Because I'm not actually sure what the sort of the time distribution is of metrics creation of having joined the project only the last year. Uh, I, so, yeah, the one above it was a proposal that we also brought up in the DEI working group as to add a last release date for the metric. Mm -hmm. Would that address what you're talking about, Sophia? Um, I, it would going forward. I'm not, would it populate all the old ones? Because then it would provide it. Because I think if we're trying to pick a cutoff that's consistent, then we'd want to look at all of the data to see what would be reasonable for each group. And I, and I think one of the tricks is going to be that because we reorganized your repos, I think some of our commit dates are not going to align with when that metric was actually last changed. Mm -hmm. um, and so probably what we'll do is have to do is go through the PDF of the release documents to identify them. That's what I was thinking. It might have to be a, um, um, it's probably manual. a manual process, but it's, mm -hmm. I think we're talking about the first round being like probably 20, 20 metrics or something. Like if we started with our very our very oldest metrics, um, would be a very nice place to start. Then those are easily identifiable in the first release. Unless that's something that the Mars team can automate. automate? I don't know. <laughs> Do they have a they're, rover? They're conveniently not here. Uh, so. It's a good move. <laughs> it's a very good move. Um, yeah, we can look at that again. Let's let's kind of put that in our in our things to talk about later. Pop pile. And we can think about that a little more. How that would work if somebody wants to do it manually. Awesome. Um, that would be kind of tedious, but it is kind of a an easy thing to to do if somebody is new and wanted to have a job, <laughs> wanted to volunteer something. <clears throat> so, yeah. I, I just wanted to add one more thing since we are talking about the spreadsheet too. So we are thinking of adding one column. I was proposing one more column. I know it will make complicated, but it will be helpful. Since we are revising the metric and we are doing it in the word uh, Google Doc again, so having a column of Google Doc that where we are revising that metric will be helpful in the spreadsheet is my suggestion. Yeah, uh, I think that's a really good idea. So it doesn't like overwrite things. Is that what you're saying? Uh, right now, once the metric is released, the link shows for the website or the GitHub where the metric is uh, residing as a release metric but we don't have a link for the Google Doc uh, where we are uh, updating or revising the already released metric. So having that column with the Google Doc link will be helpful. Okay, perfect. 
Anonymous Blobfish has you covered. <laughs> Whoever it is. Uh, yes. Awesome, Vinod. I like that idea a lot. Oh, I'm the Blobfish, I think. And I was uh, oh. I was totally going on my own thread anyway. Well, that's okay. You're no longer anonymous, but we'll just put this in. Uh, actually, where we are reviewing. That's what you're talking about, Vinod, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. I mean, if we're going to be changing the spreadsheet, we might as well go big. Do it all at once. Okay, fantastic. We're doing really good on time too. Look at that. Uh, anything else with DEI before we move forward? All right. Um, you can now pin or spotlight multiple people. All right. Thanks. Okay, common. So Don's not here. Um, but I don't, I don't think, I think she left, right? Um, planning to revisit previously released metrics with what we've learned, okay. And the occasional contributors is what they're working on right now. Yeah, and just a one point on that. This is another thing we're doing uh, with, with newcomers. So Regina and I are working on occasional contributors. And so for, for folks that have been in the community for a while, if there are action items that seem sensible to have a couple people on, um, you know, offer to, to work with somebody who may be new to the community uh, to kind of help explain the process through work or through an action. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. All right, any questions about common? Um, and for those who are new, uh, Common, the working group, is um, just looks at metrics that pertain to a variety of working groups. So it's something that would be common to everybody. Um, occasional contributors is an example of one, and that's contributors that only contribute maybe once or twice and then leave. It, they're metrics where there's a vested interest in, across several working groups, and there just isn't one that it logically fits in, and a lot of contributor metrics end up there for sure yeah because they could touch on a lot of things so okay let's move on to then to value vinod you got some stuff to share with us yeah uh, so maybe i'll start with the 10 second elevator pitch uh, value working group is focused on understanding the value of project to different stakeholders be it the individual organization academicians or uh, so maybe a variety of stakeholders, so community, that's what is uh, the focus of working group is. Right now, the value working group is more focused on developing metrics around academic uh, or the uh, academic side of contribution, like how academicians are making contribution to open source and how this is supporting them in their tenure process or in their growth phase. So a lot of focus is on that side of uh, uh, work. And there's an OSPO++ academic meeting on November 11, which will help us to uh, think through further and uh, grow the metrics on those lines. And we are also planning to revisit the old metrics. So the uh, one on the list is labor investment and the attached is the Google Docs for that. And in the last meeting, due to uh, regular members, it was not done. Like members were not there. Only I, myself and Stephen was there. So we discussed on the Oxford Plus Plus thing. And it was very short, like 15 minutes meeting. This uh, OSPO Plus Plus academic meeting, is that, <clears throat> is that a chaos thing or is that something else? I, it's something else. Okay. Okay. Cause I was like, oh, that's not on here. So that's why. Is that like an invite only or is that open? Do you know of an on? Uh, it's open. You can join. Uh, there's a link that you can I'll share in the chat. Okay. Thank you. 
And value is also looking at old metrics as well. So if you're interested in looking at labor investment, that's something that they're working on currently. <clears throat> and value actually meets next week, not this week. We should have mentioned common meets on Thursday, um, but value will meet next week. DEI meets every week. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Any questions about any of the working groups before we move on to DEI badging? All good. All right, let's go forward. <clears throat> so DEI badging has had some exciting things. I will let Matt Cantu talk about that if you'd like. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so we are, um, the, the elevator pitch is that we're an initiative of the Chaos Project um, closely tied in with the DEI working group that provides badges to event organizers for their events. So they may um, so they may show them to people and say we have good DEI. <laughs> um, so uh, as far as the, the changes go, the, we just released our third version of our uh, of our badges, and we added a lot of new metrics. Um, we updated a bunch of stuff in the documentation in the README, um, and that it, it, we this is our first um, release where we. Uh, adhered to the freeze system, and it was our, it was a kind of a practice release, but we got a lot done in the process of that as well. So, um, yeah, we're just we're just kind of focusing on building our goals for the next release, um, which is going to most likely be in April. That's all. Very nice, Matt. Thank you. I think I counted the other day, we're up to 42 events total, I believe. So that's fantastic. It's a good number. And I, I had it at the member summit, I had a chance to meet a bunch of the people who are submitting. So it was just nice to meet, meet them in person. And as Sophia says, that's the number. So yes, the answer to everything right there. All right, any questions about DEI badging for Matt or for anybody? Uh, actually, I have a question. Um, Matt, are you still looking for reviewers or how's the, that going? Always. Always okay. looking for new reviewers, um, just so that we put less load on the people who are already doing it, basically. Um, and it's it's uh, it's about a twenty hour or not twenty minute a week commitment on average. Um, twenty hours would be a lot more for a volunteer thing. But uh, basically, if you're interested, I'll I'll send the form out in the chat here, and uh, we have an orientation session. And then uh, it's a pretty it's been historically pretty easy to pick up. So yeah, I'll put the I'll put the form in for anyone who's interested. Thank you, Matt. All right, I see um, proposing, this was what Anonymous Blobfish was writing. Yes. Um, Matt, do you wanna talk a little more about this? Matt Snell? Sorry, Matt, can't you? Yeah, um, well, actually I'm Anonymous Blobfish, but thank you for breaking that. <laughs> so, so- <laughs> Yeah, you said it, uh, not I, me. <laughs> I was wondering, I was kind of thinking, this is, a, this is a kind of crammed meeting at this point when it comes to reporting everything back from every working group. Maybe we could have, and we do also have some meetings where, there, where we go like 30 minutes and then have nothing else to talk about. Maybe we could, uh, this is kind of a, a longer term question, but maybe we could space out our reports to have maybe one or two reports per week instead of having um, multi, like all of them at once on one day and then we don't have, get to talk about anything else. That's a good idea. I hear only positive things, plus one in a chat, a plus one in the voice. All right. It will help with load balancing. So, okay, cool. So um, yeah, can I just arbitrarily start assigning? Is that okay? Does anyone care? Arbitrary is good. 
<laughs> I was going to say like arbitrary uh, way. I don't and know. I will also give that person a, a little bit more of a heads up than like, oh yeah, by the way, the meeting's starting and you need to give an update right now <laughs> on your working group. So have at it. Um, yeah, I think that'd be good. And then we can have like a, a schedule or whatever. So cool. All right. Great idea, Matt. Thank you. Um, this one was from Vinod, so, all right. We talked about the update on the community form already. Um, I see this one is a new uh, addition to the agenda and also the last one, and we have six minutes. I, I added that um, mostly just because we had talked about it briefly a few weeks ago and then not actually committed to anything. Um, so if we do want to have an event around um, FOSDEM, then we should probably start moving on it. Um, just in terms of promotion. Um, I am going to be out next week on vacation, so I won't be able to do a lot, but I feel like if I was going to assign any sort of request, it would be, let's pick the week <laughs> um, in terms of we, do we want it to be before or after because Boston over the weekend. Um, I had one idea that I wanted to kind of float to the, the broader team. Um, initially, we had thought we could re-air some of the, the most popular sessions from our event, maybe have a couple of live QAs depending on the availability of folks. So I would want to start that um, feelers with all the presenters to see who is available when. Um, I was also thinking that we had some feedback in the forum around more interactive sessions. Um, it could be a bit disruptive, which is why I want to bring it up in a community setting where people can shoot it down and or talk through what makes more sense. Um, but knowing that if we're all virtual, all of our meetings are virtual anyway, um, we could basically do a, like a pseudo chaos week where we could have all of our working group meetings happening in the same week. So if we did have say Monday is sort of our like event day where we go through a bunch of a few presentations and discussions and then say, um, basically have like a special edition of all of our working group meetings that are more intentionally open and workshop based in case folks want to dial in and have sort of the the working group and discussion experience, but then led by the actual working groups themselves. We realized, I realized that some of them meet bi-weekly, so it, it might not necessarily jive with everyone's schedule, um, but that way I thought it could leverage time that we've already allocated for it versus say creating new time. <laughs> um, but I just wanna put that out there. I thought it could basically end up being a week of virtual chaos con things, um, but that's, that's a lot and that's also, <coughs> months so um is that something we want to do if we're interested so Stop. would the idea be we have a, like a monday presentation session and then like if folks who attend want to know more they could attend the work working groups is that the idea like if you want to know more or talk about this more like yeah. DEI meets wednesdays or whatever we, we would feature feature our um our regular meetings, but then everyone who's leading those meetings would know that that would be sort of a special week of meetings and that we potentially could have more of a structured plan or discussion for each of them that we would advertise up front, say for the risk working group, we're gonna talk about this concept or this metric as a way to like- I gotcha. Have it yeah. a little bit more planned and structured, which could make it more accessible for folks that are dialing in and just kind of want to kind of want to come in for that workshoppy feel, but not necessarily, um, because I feel like sometimes just joining a working group, you, you're you're losing a lot of context. You're just kind of jumping into something mid conversation. Whereas if we plan it ahead, we could plan to have more structured conversations that we would advertise up front. So if folks want to know that they want to come in and talk about these things, then we're creating space for them. No, I like that idea. It's a little bit different too than like how we do the reporting here on the working group. So it's, for example, like we talk a lot about what we've done in the past, but not what we're planning on doing in the coming week. Um, and I like that. Like, if you want to talk about dependencies, here you go. If you want to revisit DEI badging or whatever, here you go. I like that idea. Have we thought about like, like, is this like a half day thing or not sure if we even had that conversation about how long this event's going to be? We haven't. Um, okay. Yeah. I was thinking no more than a couple of hours. We did have some feedback that the virtual <laughs> sessions were too long for the pre-recorded ones. Right, right. Um, so I was thinking I wanted to do something a bit more interactive. Um, I hear I see the all synchronous comment. I was thinking about that. Given that everything is virtual, we would try to pick times when everyone could be there. 
Um, so maybe we could do sort of the lightning version of someone's talk and then they're there available for more of like a QA panel. Um, so that way we could potentially just have more interactive sessions, but I, I don't think it could be very long. Like I was thinking like max two hours at any point in time, uh, just because it is all virtual and then maybe space it out over the week. Just so like, I don't know, I, I feel like a half day totally virtual is too much. Like, right. yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I mean, there was an event that I unfortunately wasn't able to attend. Uh, it was interesting. It was all virtual, but it was over three days. But each day it was only like two hours. Um, so you're not like, you know, you're not carving out like a big chunk of your day. Right. Um, so I don't know if it, it I think it was like, pretty early for me in the Pacific time zone. It was like 6 to 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, but you can sort of pick and choose the slots you want to go to, but you're not blocking off your whole day, right? So conceivably, I like the idea of maybe kicking off on Monday and then we can e even use this time slot on Tuesday as, as part of the session, right? But mm -hmm. that's that's an option. Maybe we do it over two days it's only hour and a half each for example like i i don't know the, what the right length is but i think those are um, lengths of time like you said that people could go to right know, right i mean it's up. it's you know if i have to carve out like a two hours a day i i wouldn't it's not as challenging as carving out like a half a day or full day right so that and i think yeah. knowing that our speakers were all over the place i think we had some right. in europe and some in asia pacific so if we wanted to have any of them joining in live forms, then that kind of might dictate our schedule a bit. <laughs> so in terms of like, are the panelist QAs will be at this time and then maybe later in the day, there's a, a working group session that's already scheduled. And so it just kind of becomes a more, a more promotional version of our usual week. <laughs> um, so I, I'm basically, I don't want to create too much more work because I think it's it should be fairly lightweight. Um, but that does mean a bit more of a free form agenda. Um, we're at time. What, what I can do um, for the next meeting that I'm here is kind of just sketch this out. Um, I would say the only thing I would request in the week that I'm gone is if we just pick the week, knowing that we're going to have something either the week before or the week after FOSDEM. Um, I think I can do either. So it's just um, whatever week is better. And then I can reach out to all of those presenters and essentially see what days, times they would potentially be available for a conversation about their, their sessions. I'm kind of inclined for the week before. Okay. What are those Thanks, dates? Rich. Does anyone know? The so first weekend of February is the, I mean, that's not helpful, but that's usually the date for Osnam. Yeah, it's the 5th, 6th. So the, I don't mean to complicate this. Like I was going to bring up folks in China. Um, you know, I don't know if it, we're going to be able to do it. Like maybe we do like on Monday, like late in the day Pacific time to be inclusive of people in China, but I'm seeing that Chinese New Year's is February 1st. So that kind of throws a wrench into things because they're shut down for like two weeks. So maybe I, I the like February the... 24th week? Yeah. Yeah, that, that would work if you want to do it the week before. February 24th, you said? January. Was it January or oh. February that you said, Sophia? January 24th, because the problem is the 5th, 6th of February. So the week before would be the 29th, but we're saying that we think there's going to be some holidays midweek that might be challenging. Okay, well, we can think about this uh, a little bit more um, and do some double checking with other calendars, make sure holidays and things like that. Um, that also does not give us a ton of time to get it together after the holidays, uh, after the end of the year. So, um, but just something to think about. We can figure this out. Not a big deal. Um, okay. So I will stop sharing. And any final quick thoughts before we head out? Thank you, everybody. All right. Everybody have a great day. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye, everybody.